We welcome all of you tonight in the name of the Lord, including our audience from the live stream. We're very grateful that we can have this uh, form of fellowship. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're glad you're taking advantage of it. It means very much to us. This is our sixth message on the coming of Christ. <clears throat> the impact of his coming upon the natural order. Now let's establish at the threshold here that the scriptures always refer to Christ coming in the singular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Never in the plural. When it says Christ will come the second time mm -hmm. without sin and salvation, the second time will be, in a sense, the chronology, in a sense of chronology. But a second coming is going to be a different kind of coming. Yes, amen. It's not going to be like the first coming. When Jesus became a man, he came into the world incognito at that time. But the next time, the second time, he's not going to come incognito. Amen. No one's going to be asking who he is. Yeah, now the text is quite specific. As you notice, Brother uh, Judah read that, or Sister Logan read that. The day of the Lord will come. Yeah. Uh, if you have any question about this, we'll just affirm it again. The day of the Lord will come. As a thief in the night. That's the one we're talking about now. When the Lord comes as a thief in the night. That's the one we're talking about. Almost without exception today, people say that this is going to be a secret coming. But as a thief in the night doesn't mean secret. That's right. It means suddenly. Yes, amen. And for those who aren't looking for it, un they'll be unaware of it, that it's, it's up on them. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to come as a thief of the night to take away yeah. everything men have trusted him, aside from God. He's coming as a thief to take it away. Not going to be there anymore. In the which, when he comes as a thief of the night... The heavens shall pass away with a great noise. You've not heard noise like this. Yes, amen. And the elements will melt. They will now. They will melt. The elements, you say, well, how can electrons and protons and all the ions, how can they melt? They will melt. Amen. Amen. Anything that's made can melt. Amen. amen. They shall melt. With fervent heat, the earth also, in its totality, yeah. and the works therein, houses, lands, ships, cars, everything that's been made in it, are going to be burned up. Amen. There'll be no residue. Yeah, right. <clears throat> now the second coming of Christ is associated with finality. There's nothing in the world that requires Christ's extended stay. Mm -hmm. Amen. What needed to be done by the personal presence of Jesus in the world as it is has been completed. Amen. Nothing more remains for Jesus to do in the world yeah. with his presence here. That's right. For instance, he's already put away sin. He was 926. He put away sin. Once in the end of the world, that's the last stage of the world. We might say the last chapter of the world. The last chapter of the world commenced with Jesus putting away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now this 
this work Jesus did in the earth, it was so thorough. If I could uh, shout to the devil where he's at and ask him what he thinks about Jesus. Tell us, devil, what you think about Jesus. Uh, what kind of impact has he had on you? Then a feeble voice would utter from the belly of the earth, I'm thoroughly ashamed. I threw at Jesus everything I had. I summoned from my arsenal the strongest of all temptations, the greatest of all appeals, and he just sloughed them off with a word. And I took the last weapon I got which is death. And I hurled that at him, and he went into the region of the dead. No one ever had come out from this region before. And after three days, he left. And there wasn't anything we could do about it. There's nothing more the Lord Jesus can do to me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, I know what my end is going to be. I know my time's short. I mean it's short now, not after Jesus comes again. Yes. Yeah. Well, perhaps we might have a caucus with the principalities and powers. See, now we've heard principalities and powers, spiritual awakens in high places, rulers of the darkness of this world. We've heard it said that when Jesus comes again, there's going to be a big battle. Mm. And that an army is going to come out from among men led by you folk, going to fight Jesus. And the principalities and powers of the demonic world would say, well, <laughs> they say that because we deceived them into thinking that. Mm -hmm. We know that's not going to be the way it is. He's already spoiled us. Yes. He's already plundered us. Mm -hmm. He's already made a show of us opening openly. We can't be any more defeated than we are right now. Mm -hmm. He's just letting us run loose so he can gather where we can gather up the tares. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're here all about. So, no, we we know what's up ahead. In fact, one time we asked Jesus. Some of our representatives asked Jesus not to torment us before the time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, if we are to talk about reconciliation, God was in Christ, in his death in particular, reconciling the world unto himself. That's been done already. Yeah. Second Corinthians 5, 18 through 20 announces this. And all things are of God, who hath, past tense, Reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We're announcing this. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, we're ambassadors for Christ. We're announcing a completed work. And we're telling the church... Be reconciled to God. Yes, amen. Amen. Stop this dawdling with the world. Yeah. Amen. Stop this confrontation and confraternity with Satan and his hosts. They've already been defeated. There's nothing more needs to be done for them to be defeated. To be defeated. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and he's triumphed over death. There isn't any enemy after death. That's the last enemy. Amen. There isn't any enemies after death. Mm. And Jesus said, look at me, John, and the Alpepas. Look at me. I got the keys of death. Mm. I got them. Amen. And when I use them, everybody's going to come out of the graves. And everybody's going to come out of the abode of the dead. Amen. We don't have to have to do one other thing for that to, be, be, to happen. Amen. It's already, the defeat's already happened. Amen. Now, the apostolic doctrine about these things is that everything that's made is going to pass away. Yeah. Yeah. Thou, Lord, I love these texts where the uh, 
the Lord moved holy men to talk to God. Thou, Lord, in the beginning thou hast laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of thine hands. They shall perish. But thou remainest. They shall all wax old yes. as doth a garment. Now the church particularly the leaders of the church, the teachers of the church, the preachers of the church, the elders of the church, have no business getting all embroiled in the affairs of the world. Amen. Amen. This is the pentagon, paragon of ignorance. Amen. The world's going to pass away in the lust thereof, so what in the world are godly, supposedly godly people doing majoring on what's happening in the world? Amen. It's our business to warn people, get out of this environment. Amen. Get your head unpinned from the world. Amen. Sister with a nail, j j jail with a nail, pinned sister's head to the earth. And that's what's happening in the religious circles today. People's head is being pinned to the earth Amen. that's passing away. Amen. Doesn't make any kind of sense to me at all. As far as I know, the only remaining work that needs to be done is separating the wheat and the tares. That's the only significant work to be done. And it's going to be done, as we will find, at Christ's return. He's not going to come back to set up a kingdom. He's done set it up. The heavens do rule. See, but the modern church is so obtuse that it's looking forward to Jesus ruling when he's sitting on the throne now. Amen. With angels and principalities and powers being made subject to him, all things, all authority in heaven and earth, that's all authority there is, have been given to him and he's reigning. But he's not reigning to make the world a better place. Yeah. He's not reigning to defeat the devil. He's already done that. He's reigning to bring many sons to glory. Amen. That's how hard it is to be saved. Amen. That's how difficult this simple plan of salvation is. That in order for you to safely negotiate from earth to heaven, you've got to have a king yes. with all authority in heaven and earth sitting at God's right hand bringing you home. Because if that isn't there, you'll never get there. Amen. Amen. All right, now we finish with the introduction. Let's get down to, to our text here. At the time the Lord returns, in fact, just before it, I think it, all this will happen almost like simultaneously. But there's a certain sequence to it that is needed. The things that start to happen before Jesus comes, nobody, they won't be sufficient for people to change during that period of time. Yeah. When the five foolish virgins heard the cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, there wasn't time to make any changes. Yeah. Oh, they wished they would. They tried. They tried. But there wasn't time. Now the scriptures speak to us about some things that are going to happen before Jesus comes again. I think it'll probably be almost simultaneous if you looked at it. Look at it when it actually happened. It'll probably be very close to together. Matthew 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. The moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven, the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. It shouldn't surprise me that some of this is beginning. The earth worshipers are going to find out the earth's not God. That's right, man. The stargazers and star worshipers are going to find out you shouldn't trust in them. Yes. Amen. 
stars alike fall out of their sockets. Nature be kind of quirky. Won't be able to predict. Your clocks won't work anymore. That sort of thing. It's going to happen before Jesus comes. What he said. Here's another word on it. Mark 13, 25. The stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he shall send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Here's another statement of Luke 21. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. At then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Well, you say, doesn't that mean spiritually? <laughs> like, what are you trying to say? This is it real? You're trying to say God talks about the sun and the moon and the stars parabolically? Really, do you want to really take up a postulate like that? Have to support that? Or are you not willing to support that nature is going to fall apart? Amen. Before it's destroyed. Just like man's going to fall apart. Amen. Before he's destroyed. See? Not only are men going to be frightened and falling apart and calling on the name of the Lord and seeking for the mountains to hide them, but the environment where they are is going to be doing the same thing. Amen. There are prophecies by the, in the prophets about this sort of thing. These are like hints. I can't provide a perfect understanding of all these things. I just believe these things. Isaiah 13.10 for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. What's that mean? Well, it means what it says. Amen. It's going to happen. Here's Ezekiel. Let's, let's like bring Ezekiel to the witness stand. When I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and, and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord. Now that there's a parallel of this to an earthly situation, I don't doubt. But if there was not a reality of this happening, you couldn't make a parallel. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Joel said this, Joel 2.10, The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and moon shall be dark, the stars shall withdraw their shining. Joel 3.15, The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Peter quotes this in Acts 2.19, I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Now he included, Peter quoting this, included the fact that the day of salvation is going to also come before this great and notable day of the Lord. But things are going to start falling apart before Jesus comes. Now this, saying these, these words, sun ceasing, moon ceasing, shine, star ceasing, shine, constellation ceasing, this parallels this word spoken in Matthew 25, 6. It's like nature shouting this word, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. That's what that is. Yes. And by this time, when that word goes out, the day of salvation is terminated. Amen. There'll be nobody else get in. Not a thousand years later, not a million years later. Nobody else. That's it. The curtain's going to come down. 
on the great work of salvation as we know it. We know this is the case because after these signs that he indicated, signs of a collapse of nature, which is the only st stable influence we know of. We set our clocks, mm -hmm. days, minutes, hours, seconds, years, months, by nature. So it's the most stable influence to which we're subjected. But when it falls apart, the next thing that's mentioned is the Son of Man's going to come. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, 30, after he visited those signs, said, Then shall appear the Son of Man in heaven. See, everyone's going to look up. Death will have been destroyed. There ain't going to be anybody in the flesh. Listen, people, there's not going to be anybody in the flesh see Jesus come in his glory. Amen. Won't be changed. Everyone's going to see him. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven's power and great glory, and they'll know it's hopeless. As Jeremiah said, the summer's come and the harvest is past, and we're not saved. Amen. Yeah. They're going to know. That's right. God's going to have his day. Yes. Amen. Jesus is going to have his day. Amen. Everybody that rejected the Son of God, everyone that rejected God, everyone that failed to heed him, he's going to have time to know what a blunder I made. Amen. What a strategic error I made, and, and they'll not be able to reverse it. Mark 13 speaks the same way, Mark 13, 26 and 27, after he'd listed all these shake-up of heavenly powers. <clears throat> then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels, this is after the powers of heaven, <laughs> shaken, shall send his angels to gather, the elect, to gather his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Let me tell you, the only reason the earth is here yeah. is because God's people are here. Amen. Amen. Once you remove God's people, there is no further reason yeah. for the world remaining. Amen. The world is a stage on which the drama of redemption is being worked out. Amen. The world is the place where the sons of God are being perfected. Mm -hmm. And once Jesus comes and gathers out his people, there's no further need right. for the world. Amen. Luke said much the same thing. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Amen. Then he's going to separate Jesus said in a parable of the wheat and the tares, which he explained in fine detail, let both grow together, not until the wheat are taken. Let both grow together until the harvest. Yeah. That's what we just read about, the angels gathering. Till the time of the harvest. I will say to the reapers... Well, maybe we shouldn't read this because this doesn't fit in with the modern theology. This doesn't fit in with Left Behind and Hell Lindsay and all these airheads. This doesn't fit in. Mm -hmm. yeah, then will I say to the reapers, gather ye together first, I say first, the tares. First, the tares? That's what he said. This is the Son of God talking now. So to say that he raptures the church out first, you're like arguing with Jesus. First the tares. Gather first the tares and but gather my wheat into my barn. Why gather the tares first? Because they are the intruders. The field was made for the saints. It wasn't even made for the ungodly. The world gives no advantage to anybody. Ultimately, gives no advantage to anybody. Yeah. The only advantage you get is to get out of it Amen. and to separate from it. So the tares are the intruders. Yes. God didn't plant them. Mm -hmm. They're called the children of Satan, yeah, that's right. children of the wicked Amen. one. Amen. And there's no evidence. As, well, uh, you can receive this, I'm sure, but if you can't, I'm just going to say it anyway. There's no hope of a tear becoming a wheat. Amen. 
Now, this is a high view, this is a high view, but it's time to have a couple of high views, I'd say. I'd say the way things are we're going, we, we're due for a couple of high views. Amen. The tares are nowhere yep. ever said to be converted. Amen. Now this is God's, this is how God sees, you understand, you can't, you can't identify the tares. The only way they can be identified by men is when the time of the harvest comes. Yep. Tares can't bear fruit, but they look just like wheat. You see a picture of a tear and a picture of a wheat, and you can't tell the difference between the two mm -hmm. until they start bearing fruit. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then when you can tell the difference. It's still the only way you can tell the difference. If professed Christians aren't bearing fruit, we don't really know if they're a tear or a wheat. Mm -hmm. But God knows, the Lord knows them that are His, and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Let both grow together until the harvest, which is the scripture says when Jesus comes, that's the, that's the harvest. And even the rapturites know that when Jesus comes, He's going to gather the wheat. But to gather the wheat means he's got to raise all the dead Christians. Yeah, right. And 1 Corinthians 15 says, as soon as the Christians are dead, death's going to be destroyed. And death's going to be swallowed up of life. It's so even after the saints are raised. That's all right. Let's ex we'll, ex we'll accept that as a tenable view. Even when the saints are raised, there's not even going to be any more death after they're raised. Right. Death will be swallowed up of life. That's what 1 Corinthians 15 says. Yeah. It's talking about the resurrection of the saints, but that's going to occur at the same time with the resurrection of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Resurrection's always in the singular. It's never in the plural either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, the Son of Man, he's going to shout, yeah. and the graves are going to give up all the dead. Not some of them. Going to give up all the dead. Some will be raised to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. Mm -hmm. One resurrection, one time when Jesus comes, and in that death, the resurrection will prove death has been destroyed mm -hmm. and is, is no more. Amen. All right, now having said all of that, let's turn our attention to nature. Because our... Uh, principle tonight is the, the impact of the coming of Christ on the natural order. Now Peter says what it is, it says that when the Lord comes a thief in the night, heavens will pass away with a great noise, the elements shall melt with fervor and heat the work, the earth and the works of the end shall be burned up. That's when he comes as a thief. So let's, let's reason this out now. Nature is under the bondage of corruption. Even though it doesn't look like that to the worldly minded, it looks like it's been here for billions and billions of years. Yeah. They've concluded that, huh? <laughs> They've concluded that nature's been here for billions and billions, mm -hmm. and someone can't even count that high. Yeah. Years. Mm -hmm. But you can't be in a state of deterioration without ultimately expiring. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. Uh -huh. Romans 9, 8, 19 tells us that the creation, creature is called here, it means creation, the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. <clears throat> Creation's waiting. Evidently it doesn't know who the sons of God are for sure. The angels know because they minister to them. God knows because he chose them. Jesus knows, so he interceded for them. But creation's waiting. It hasn't been divulged to them yet. This is the Son of God. You make sure you yield plenty of water to them. Well, that's a, that's a group of God's people over there. Make sure that there's plenty of water over in that region. See, the nature, mm -hmm. he doesn't see this. He's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not for the not for people to become sons of God. He's waiting for the manifestation of yeah. them all. Yeah, right. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Creation's mortality was bound on creation. It had no say-so at all. Right. No say-so at all. Yeah. Not willingly, that is, this isn't a result of nature's choice, 
See, nature did choose to obey Christ. Yes. He walked on stormy waters. The waters held him up. That's right. Yeah. He commanded bread to be multiplied. It was multiplied. Mm -hmm. He called for a fish to deliver a coin to Peter. Fish delivered the coin. Mm -hmm. See, that God, Jesus was in control of nature when he was Amen. here. Amen. Right. But, uh, but we aren't. Mm -hmm. So it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creatures made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who was subjected to the same in hope. Mm -hmm. See, because when man sinned and was... And mortality, mortality is bound upon the environment had to be mortal too. Yes, uh -huh. The environment had to match the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The environment matched the people before the fall. It matched the people after the fall. It's going to match the people through eternity. Yeah. Amen. Because the, cre nature, the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage. Yeah. Now if you have an ear for it, sometimes you can hear nature groaning. It's so like a groan going. Yeah, yeah. Nature itself is to be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know, mm -hmm. you do know this, I trust. Mm -hmm. We know the whole creation groaneth mm -hmm. and travaileth, that's travail as in childbirth, mm -hmm. and travaileth together in pain together, they're united in this, in pain together mm -hmm. until now. Amen. To so nature, like, has been under this bondage of corruption for six millennia. Right. It's been groaning. Because yeah. anything God made wasn't intended. It was intended to go on. Yeah. Only sin interrupted, interrupted this. So it's waiting for deliverance. It shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. That's when the sons of God are manifested. When's that going to be? When he sends his angels to gather them, mm -hmm. all of them together. Then the sons, plural, all of them. Mm -hmm. At that point, nature will be liberated yeah. <laughs> from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty. We're going to manage it. We're going to be the yeah. managers yeah. of the world to come. We're, the world to come has been made subject to man. Not yet, not yet, not yet. But it was made subject to Christ. We saw what it was like when Christ was here. We saw what it was like to be the, the nature to be in subjection to man. But when Jesus comes again, and nature is renewed, they're looking forward to it because we're going to be good masters. Amen. And we're not going to be like the people today. Be good masters. All this is going to happen when Jesus comes as a thief. When he comes as a thief in the night. Now the, the prophets prophesied about this too. The psalmist said, Psalm 102, 25, Of old time thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall all perish. But thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. Just be like taking off one set of clothes yes. that were necessary for the saving of the elect. Mm -hmm. Going to take those off. Mm -hmm. Put on a new one, yep. which is adapted for an eternal reign. Amen. Jesus declared, For verily I say unto you, uh, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So God's not going to, nature's not going to pass away till everything God said he'd do in this realm, he does. Amen. Every promise has got to be done. Mm -hmm. So much for the people to say, well, he's not going to fulfill those promises to Israel. Yeah. They've all been cut off. Mm -hmm. No, as long as there's any prophecy to be fulfilled, the world's going to remain. Amen. Yeah. Amen. When they've all been fulfilled, then God's going to say to the Son, that's it. That's right. Go gather them out now and bring the tares out. Get the tares out. It's, we're over now. It's done now. Right. No more work is to be done on the earth. It's, it's finished. Project complete. Amen. Again, Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall never pass away. 
Now, Peter's language is so descriptive, it's marvelous that uh, it's not recognized more readily. It's, the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise, the elements melt with fervent heat. When the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night, when that happens, that's when these elements are going to melt. Everything's going to pass away with a great noise. Think how vast the heavens are. Yes. With all the advanced telescopes and so forth, science is not anywhere near plumb the depth of the universe. Yes, Whatever they find is more beyond. Yeah. They get a more powerful telescope and they can still more beyond. Mm -hmm. But the whole kit and caboodle is going to pass away. Amen. That's right. How serious is sin? Mm -hmm. It's so serious that the universe had to die. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. As far as you could, man never, I don't think man's capable of discovering the extent of the universe and this is just one of our section of it is just a small one well, evidently one of the smaller yes. segments of it uh, gonna all pass away when when Jesus comes as a thief in the night at that time the elements <laughs> will melt the building blocks yeah. for nature we're down now to the electrons and protons and I don't know the other kind of ions we're down to that level. They're all going to melt. That's right. Now, I don't know if man can make a fire strong enough to melt the elements. No. But God can. Amen. Amen. He's going to melt the elements. So listen, this end is just as firmly determined as Noah's flood was. That's right. God destroyed the world by water. He's going to destroy it the second time by fire. That time the works in the world be burned up. That includes all the skyscrapers, that includes Las Vegas, that includes all the cities, that includes all the buildings in Joplin, that includes all the auto manufacturers, that includes everything that man's done yeah. is going down the tube. Amen. So you better not build your life around those things. Amen. Don't build your life around these things. I mean, you may... You, may, you present a pretty good case about what well, we all got to make a living and we all have to live here. But after you've, after you've done with your explanation, Amen. you got to face up to the fact that this thing is going to pass away. Amen. That's right. Every bit of it. They shall all be what the script Peter said, dissolved. That means they aren't going to be anymore in any form. So you can't really dissolve anything now. You burn it up, there's ashes, and smoke, there's, there's some residue left. But when God burns it up, there's not going to be any residue left Amen. Right. at all. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. All right, what are the implications of this, uh, of this doctrine? How, sh how, should we, how should this impact on the way we think and how we reason? The fact that Christ's second coming is going to have this impact on the entire natural order is going to pass away. Peter reasons this way. 2 Peter 3.11 after he said, after our text. Seeing then that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all con holy conversation and godliness? Yeah. Now we should... Preachers and teachers should demand that people answer this question. Yeah. 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 If you even have to call out people by name and say, what, tell us, I'll give us the benefit of your thinking on this. If what Peter told us is true, that the heavens and earth are going to pass away, the great, the heaven pass away, the great noise, the earth also, and the works of the earth shall be burned up. If this is true, how should we live? Yes. Now, if you never face up to that question, it's time to face up. Because mm -hmm. yes. if you're not ready for this day and it comes, you're out. Amen. Amen. You may cry out, you know, for rocks and mountains to hide you from the wrath of the Lamb. A man that visited us in Indiana said that they'll cry for the rocks and mountains to fall on them. The rocks and mountains will say, we can't do anything. we got to go too. Amen. 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 What manner of persons? 
Then he spells it out for us. Looking for... That's anticipate the thing we just read about. Looking for it and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What, what's he mean hasting unto the day of God? Does it mean if we long for it a lot, it'll happen sooner? Well, some people they say so. Some people, this is taught. This is taught. They say, let's just hurry up and win as many souls as we can. As soon as we win the world of Christ, then Jesus will come. Boy, well, yeah, this is taught. This is taught. And it's got, you got to get to the point where that all sounds stupid to you. Because it is stupid. What he means is you're running toward it. You're picking up your pace as you go. See, most of the time in running, you get fatigued. The longer you run, you get fatigued. But in the spirit, the longer you run, you pick up your pace. Amen. And faith doesn't think in terms of time. Yeah. Faith projects itself way up there and shapes the life for that coming. Yeah. So that when he comes, I can be found without spot mm -hmm. or wrinkle or any such Amen. thing. Amen. Now, in view of this, the love of the world is forbidden. God's eternal, right? The life he gives is eternal life. The inheritance he gives is the eternal inheritance. Now tell me, what sense does it make to love the world with this, which is temporal when God, Christ, eternal life, the inheritance is eternal? What sense does it make to love a temporal world? 